and welcome to Let's Talk Spoop. I'm your host, Don, and today we are capping off the Halloween sort of marathon with my personal favorite of the original Halloween movies, Halloween H2O. I say that because there's a Rob Zombie remake that I like better uh, than Halloween H2O, but nixing the Rob Zombie remake, this is my favorite Halloween movie. So we're going to talk about it. <clears throat> so, as per usual, we break down uh, the movie into six separate categories. Those six categories are story, acting, music, atmosphere, look, and creep, and... So without much further ado, let's uh, talk about Halloween. So uh, it opens with Langdon, Illinois, in, like on the screen, and then October 29th, 1998, the classic opening, only this is different because it opens three days before Halloween, which is kind of cool. Uh, so it shows you a lady walking into her up to her house. She appears like her house has been broken into. Um, then... <clears throat> There's some neighborhood kids, one of whom is played by, of all people, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, uh, who she talks to. J Joseph Gordon-Levitt goes in to investigate, comes out, says the house is fine, which, as we learned in previous Halloween movies, is never true. House was not fine. Um, the lady, or the, she goes to look into the house herself after they leave. There's a picture of Dr. Loomis in her office, which shows you that, like, Oh, she's got a connection to Dr. Loomis. We later find out that she's actually his nurse uh, after he uh, retired and she became his nurse. So that's kind of cool. And so he's been searching for, or he was searching for Michael up until the time that he died. Uh, anyway, so we see that connection and then she goes to check on Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Joseph Gordon-Levitt has been stabbed in the face with an ice skate, which is pretty legit. Uh, cool way to die. And then... She gets her throat slit, and Michael Myers leaves. Um, one of the downsides of the way I watch this is I've been watching... I'm on vacation, as I've stated before. I'm at my parents' house. And I watched it on demand. Most of these on demand. Uh, except this one, I had to record off of BBC America. Uh, thusly, it was edited, and I didn't actually get to see the lady's throat get slit, so, so that's kind of poopy, but it w probably was a cool scene, I don't know, I don't remember, it's been a while since I've seen this movie, um, so, then, Michael drives away, we get the next day, there's cops investigating, we get some exposition, where we find out the things I already stated, um, about Dr. Loomis searching for Michael, and that he's been missing for, tw and he's been searching for him for 20 years, which may seem strange to you guys, because, of the previous movies in which he was involved. But at the end of this movie, I'll explain at the end of this tape, I will explain it to you, um, in my little spoilery section. All right. So don't you worry unless you don't want spoilers, in which case you should worry. Um, so we get some exposition. We get a segue to, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. She's back and she is having bad dreams. She's having nightmares. She wakes up, um, screaming her son, person to check on her her son's played by josh hartnett this was back when josh hartnett was amazing i mean he probably still is i don't know whatever happened to him if you know what happened to josh hartnett put it in the comments because i would like to know and i'm too lazy to look it up um but yeah so josh hartnett pops in he's the son his character's name is john we find out that uh jamie lee curtis is going by the name of carrie tate uh in this movie um then we get quotations Summer Glen, California, October 31st. Uh, John, as I stated previously, is uh, being mean to his mother because she wants to keep him, uh, or she's overprotective. They talk a little bit about, you know, why, because A, it's Halloween. Uh, B, he has a former meth addict father, or meth addict father, and uh, she's very protective of him uh, because he knows her story, her history. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah. Then she hallucinates some. Um, she starts seeing Michael everywhere. Like, throughout the whole rest of the movie, she sees him up until he actually shows up. Um, then we get this cool kind of bathroom scene where there's, like, this girl, this lady, 
who pulls over in a really old truck. Um, and her kids got to go to the bathroom, so they have to go in the men's room because the ladies' room is locked. And then Michael comes in and steals her purse and doesn't murder her or her child, which is weird for him. Um, but again, this is a different Michael Myers. New and improved. Um, and then we find out that Carrie is either a teacher or the principal at Hillcrest. Um, John and friends are staying behind to party. So there's this thing uh, that like everybody at this Hillcrest Academy, which is a private school, um, is going to go to Yosemite National Park for a camp out on Halloween for some reason. But uh, Carrie refuses to sign John's letter giving him permission to go because she works there. So he's not getting to go. So then his friends are like, well, if you're not going, we're not going. So they're going to hang out and party. Um, we find out that Carrie is having an illicit relationship with the guidance counselor, which is weird. And then she's teaching a class, which is why I'm not sure if she's the principal or not. She's teaching an English class, and uh, they're talking about Frankenstein, and there's some massive foreshadowing there. Uh, then Carrie changes her mind about sending John to Yosemite, signs his permission slip. John, of course, doesn't turn it in and does not leave. And then Michael Myers goes on a killing rampage. Love it. It's a great story. Uh, I really enjoyed it. As far as slasher films go, it's probably one of the more complete stories in one episode you'll ever get. And it does. And there's a full-on explanation of why she's now known as Carrie Tate. Like I said, I'm going to talk about it in the spoiler section. So four out of five for story. Um, acting, you get a young Joseph Gordon-Levitt playing it, playing a punk, perfect. Uh, Julie Lee Curtis is on point. Josh Hartnett does great. I loved it. Four out of five for acting. Music. So unlike every other Halloween movie, this movie doesn't just recycle the Halloween theme. It has its own completely different soundtrack. It's fantastic, and I love it. Four out of five for music. Um, the atmosphere, it's a creepy private school. That's layout is really confusing. It makes no sense to me, but it might make no sense to me because I went to public school. Those of you who have gone to private school, let me know if it makes sense to you. Um, so, three out of five for atmosphere. Look, uh, so Michael has been hiding out for 20 years, supposedly, but his mask is pristine white and he looks totally fine. So, that's weird. Um, as I said, I watched this on uh, BBC America, so it was edited a little bit, so you didn't get much gruesomeness. Um, there was one pretty cool scene where this lady gets her leg beat up, like, cut up and stuff, but overall, I was not overly impressed with the look of the movie, especially when you compare it to, like, I watched The Thing, John Carpenter's The Thing, like, yesterday, and the special effects in that were amazing, and then you compare it to, you know, this, which is a slasher film, but still, just not quite, they could have done better, in my opinion. So, two out of five for look. Uh, creep, it's, you know, consistent Michael Myers stalking and being stealthy and, you know, that's normal, but, and then there's a lot of really cheap jump scares with, uh, Carrie's character, which I thought was just silly and kind of honestly takes away from the creepiness to me. So two out of five for creep, uh, we tally up those scores and you get a 3.2 skulls for Halloween H2O. And now the spoilers. So, um, Halloween 6, as I stated previously, uh, is the last of that storyline. And what had happened was Halloween H2O is a separate timeline in which 4, 5, and 6 didn't happen. If you look into the background, you find out that, like, if you go Google it, uh, you find out that Tommy Doyle, who's played by Paul Rudd in uh, the sixth movie, wrote comic books based off of his experience in the first movie and that's what four five and six are essentially um carrie or jamie lee curtis's character laurie strode goes into witness protection changes her name for the third time to carrie tate and hides out in california so she gets away from illinois essentially and then she cleans her life up because she kind of went off the deep end a little bit and now she's a principal um yeah, so I'm not a big fan of when they decide to just do away with sequels. And one of the things I found was interesting when I researched this movie was that uh, originally the script was written where they didn't retcon 
uh, the originals. Instead, four, five, and six still happened, but uh, Lori fakes her death, as stated previously, and doesn't know that her daughter was murdered by Michael Myers. Um, so yeah, I thought that was really cool. That and I wish they had done that instead of just deciding to do away with it. But anyway, as I said before, this is the end of my Halloween marathon. Technically, there is another movie uh, that falls H2O. It is called Halloween Resurrection, but it is hands down the worst Halloween movie of all of them, and that includes Halloween 3 and Halloween 2, the remake. Um, it is hot garbage, and it stars Buster Rhymes, and that's all you need to know about it. Um, I do not want to do a review of it, first of all, and second of all, I don't actually have the ability to watch it right now, so even if I wanted to do a review of it for you, my faithful viewers, I can't. So, yeah, that's a thing. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed my marathon, and check out Halloween H2O.